Welcome all, welcome back on Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host. And today I do have the pleasure to present you the new Omega Speedmaster Silver Snoopy Award 50th Anniversary Chronograph. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to get our latest notifications. If you do so, you have the chance to win the brand new iPhone 12 Pro. The happy winner will be announced in the community section tab January 2021. Good luck! Joining me from Beal is Gregory Kisling. He is head of product development of Omega. And Greg is in Biel. I am in my office in Vienna. Unfortunately, this time I wasn't able to go to Biel or to Switzerland to travel to Switzerland due to some new uh, travel restrictions due to COVID-19. I had to stay home, but we have our cameraman there, um, Jorge. Hello also to you, Jorge. Hello to Greg, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, it's good to see you. Not not in life, but uh, at least we could make it. To quickly um, go back on Monday, this week, 5th of, 5th of October, Omega was launching the chronograph at 5 p.m. worldwide. And already I have been posting some pictures in the community section. And this watch was really awaited from uh, the uh, Omega fan community and from, the, from lots of people uh, following what Omega is doing the last year. So Greg, the stage is yours and please show us the new Speedmaster chronograph, this incredible cool watch. Yes, correct. So hello, Alexander. I, I took with me my, my little mascot, Snoopy, <laughs> which is actually the mascot of the astronaut of the Apollo program. And it was a fantastic uh, adventure. Yesterday we released the special Speedmaster Silver Snoopy Award. Actually, we celebrate the, the 50th anniversary of the, the Silver Snoopy pin that Omega received uh, the 5th of October uh, in 1970. And we decided to create something very special for this edition. Uh, this is actually the third edition of the Speedmaster Snoopy. The first one started in, in 2003 with this uh, professional moon watch emitted by 5,441 pieces. So here you see the, the Snoopy patch with the blue sky. And then five years ago, uh, for celebrating the 45th anniversary of the Silver Snoopy Award, we launched this limited edition in black and white uh, with, a, with a fantastic case back as well. As you can see, the silver Snoopy pin is applied on the blue enamel sky with uh, some silver powder representing the stars of the universe. Limited edition of 1970 pieces. And for celebrating the 50th anniversary, we, we had to think different, uh, to think out of the box, as we like to, to mention. And we wanted really to create a dynamic animation. And uh, this was possible thanks to the, the new movement we decided to introduce on, on that Snoopy. So it's a very special Speedmaster with the Master Chronometer technology. Just before going uh, into the detail, I think it's important to mention why Snoopy and, and Omega. Snoopy on the Moon was designed invented by Schultz in 1968, so before the moon landing. And the astronaut wanted to have a mascot uh, represented the safety program of, uh, of the Apollo missions. And Omega received the, the, the Silver Snoopy uh, Award, which is the highest award you can receive uh, in space exploration. It's the a, it's a highest honor for, for the mission Apollo 13. The Spinmaster played a, a great role in this mission. Uh, I think everybody knows the story of Apollo 13. Uh, they had a uh, oxygen tank explosion and the Spinmaster played a, a great role in this mission when it helped to time an engine burn uh, during uh, exactly 14 seconds to to make a mid course correction. All the timers were absolutely off and the only way to measure exactly 14 seconds was the use of the Spinmaster uh, and that's why Omega received this uh, this great award uh, the 5th of October uh, 1970. The Speedmaster always was the backup for timing purposes and as it shows, it worked and it worked properly. Absolutely, yeah. 
Okay, so I'm very pleased to take you through uh, the presentation box. This is the cover. Uh, inside the cover box, you have also a great booklet uh, which explain you all the story different edition we made for for the the silver snoopy and then number one number two and of course the latest uh, edition and here the box the presentation box uh, which is actually inspired by uh, the the cooling unit uh, uh, case of uh, snoopy or the astronaut you know so the, the, the presentation box is really inspired by this uh, cooling unit case. So you can also use it on your bomber if you want. Huh? So we can say this box is authentic um, to the box uh, the astronauts are wearing when they are heading uh, for the launch uh, and uh, for their missions. Exactly, ex exactly like this. Really cool. So now let's open the box. In the box you will see the watch and also a very nice picture of uh, Snoopy with peanuts. They designed a special uh, Snoopy wearing a Speedmaster uh, timing the, the 14 seconds. That's why we mentioned what could you do in 14 seconds. Under the cover you have some accessories. Uh, you have a travel pouch which is very useful for the end consumer then a selvit cloth to clean your watch and inside the presentation cushion of the watch you have a magnifying glass here we are to admire and to see all the details of the watch let's talk now about first the front of the watch it's a speedmaster uh, 42 millimeters in, in stainless steel but the design of the case is actually inspired by the ST105012, uh, the fourth generation, which was uh, the first watch worn on the moon in, in July 1969. So we, we made a tomography of the fourth generation in order to respect uh, the geometry uh, for, for the case body. Of course, the case back is slightly different due to the animation, but the case body, the, the diameter of the pushers, the crown, Everything came from the fourth generation. Talking now about the tachymeter ring, we decided to use a blue ceramic ring with a white enamel tachymeter scale. And the same process we use for the Speedmaster uh, 321 in stainless steel or in, in platinum. I have with me the, the production process of this, uh, of this bezel. So we start here by producing the green body of uh, blue ceramic. Uh, uh, we introduce for obtaining the blue cobalt pigment uh, in order to resist uh, to the sintering temperature. So we stage it this piece during 24 hours up to 1400 degrees Celsius in order to obtain the, the great properties of the ceramic in terms of hardness. This is named the, the hard body. We machine with diamond wheels the final shape of the, the ceramic bezel. And then, thanks to the laser technology, we engraved the tachymeter scale with a deepness of roughly 0.05 mm. And then we filled the cavities with five layers of white enamel. So it's a kind of uh, metier d'art touch on, on this bezel. And then we remove the excess of white enamel, and then we add a, a chemical polishing for, for obtaining a, a glossy, uh, glossy effect of the, of the bezel. Already referring, Greg, to one of the questions coming from our community. So there is no loom this time applied on the basil. It's white ceramic. No, there's no loom. Just uh, for the hands and at the end uh, of the indexes. That's it. Then the, the dial. Uh, we decided to use a, a massive silver dial because as you know the pin we receive it's a silver 925 silver pin so we wanted to use also massive silver for the entire dial and as you can see the dial is beveled as well the indexes the minute hand and the chronograph hands the indexes and the hands are uh, blue coated with a with a pvd technology and we introduce also the 
the old mark, the, nine, uh, the AG, silver 925 old mark, just above the central hole. The three subdials are blue. Uh, we use the blue PVD technology for the subdials at 3 and 6 o'clock. And at 9 o'clock, you can see the, the first picture of Snoopy. And just above uh, the helmet, you have the 50th anniversary. This subdial is, is produced a part of the dial. So the subdial is like a, a very small dial. Uh, which is uh, stamped and we introduce blue uh, lacquer uh, technique and then we remove the excess of blue in order to discover the silver Snoopy. And when you turn the watch over, you will see that something is happening. <laughs> this time we wanted really to animate something because Snoopy is also a cartoon, Snoopy is flying, is uh, is moving, is dreaming, and we wanted really to play with uh, with Snoopy. So as you can see, there is a disc representing our good planet, the Earth, and this disc is actually in sync with the small seconds hand. So it will turn once a minute, not once in 24 hours, <laughs> but once in minute. So it will turn in in tandem with the the, the small seconds hand. You have here the moon, which is actually the far side of the moon, because if you think about the trajectory of the Apollo 13, to come back safely to Earth, then they, they did an orbit around the moon to, to, to come back. And we use for the moon a, a specific method in order to obtain these great pictures of the, the far side of the moon. So it's a microstructure metallization. And when we look at the scenery, including the capsule of uh, Snoopy, is this approximately the perspective um, the astronauts had when they were looking out of their capsule? Exactly. When, when they made the, the orbit of the moon, they will see not exactly the same sign, but this is, the, this is the, the feeling, yes. So when you activate the chronograph, and this is what is completely magical with this product, when you start the chronograph, you turn the watch and you wait a few seconds and you will see that Snoopy is moving too. And exactly 14 seconds after is flying above the Earth. So we played also with this 40, uh, 14 seconds because uh, the astronaut, they had really to time 14 seconds for, for the engine burn. Uh, is Snoopy only visible for 14 seconds? No, 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 no. Snoopy is flying above the Earth after 14 seconds. You see Snoopy uh, after 8 seconds, but he's above the Earth after 14 seconds. But you see him uh, during 30 seconds, roughly. So, as you can imagine, the Snoopy hand is in sync with the chronograph seconds function. So I have to say, wow, this is by far the coolest thing, really the coolest thing you have ever been doing. And I am for 30 years in the industry uh, following what uh, uh, the industry is doing, reporting, writing stories as a watch journalist. But I have to say, Greg, chapeau, heads off. Uh, this is really one of the absolutely most astonishing and coolest thing I have ever seen. So cool. Absolutely cool. That's really toys for boys. I love it. Toys for boys, exactly. So Snoopy is in its uh, commander uh, service module, okay, in black and white, of course. And there is actually also a dial which is just above the movement, representing the, the, the black universe with all the stars and here the famous quote, eyes on the stars, uh, which is transferred on the, the black uh, lacquer dial. Talking now about the, 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 the magical hand, eh? we use a specific technology and, and process and material for producing that hand. The idea was really to obtain a, a transparent hand, of course. Eh? And this was possible thanks to the silica glass. So the hand is not made in sapphire, but it's made in silica glass for different reasons, for aesthetic reasons, but also for technical reasons. We obtain a fantastic uh, component 
which with a great accuracy, with a great precision. And on top, that's a cool thing. The entire watch is certified as a master chronometer, meaning that the watch is able to withstand magnetic fields up to 15,000 Gauss and much more. It is being tested by METAS, the Swiss Institute of Metrology. Correct, yeah. The movement uh, driven all these hands uh, is the 3861 uh, caliber, which, which is actually the latest uh, upgraded version of the 1861, which earned 50% of the component with this new updated version. In order to be a master chronometer certified, we also improve the chronometric performance, which is now between 0 plus 5 seconds uh, a day. That's for sure incredible teamwork, Greg. Congratulations um, once again from my side uh, to bringing this thing together. No LCD display on the back of the watch, no batteries, uh, no kidding, no joking around. That's mechanical, a mechanical model. And uh, I love uh, the way how you have been bringing to life this animated scene with Snoopy on the back of the watch. Really cool. And one more thing, we also decided to embolst the trajectory path of the Apollo 13 mission uh, on the black lining strap, which is actually a coated, a blue coated nylon fabric strap. And uh, so on the lining, you can see the trajectory path of the Apollo 13 mission. You have here the Earth, the Moon, and the trajectory, and the explosion, and the mid-course correction when the crew used the Speedmaster for uh, the correcting the, the trajectory. This time, no bracelet, and the watch is only available with that beautiful strap. We are showing it in the video. So the watch is uh, limited through production, but not limited as a watch itself. Exactly. And when are deliveries going to start? We'll start uh, the, the deliveries uh, beginning of uh, November, yes. Uh, was it necessary? That's a question I can imagine that will come uh, from um, many of my viewers, of our viewers. Was it necess necessary to do any adjustments uh, on the movement to animate the scene uh, with Snoopy and uh, to make rotate the Earth? Was the new now uh, certified as a master chronometer certified new movement strong enough, powerful enough uh, to animate the whole scene and was the accuracy uh, then still there? So the movement is exactly the same as the movement we use for the Apollo 11 50th anniversary. So, but the movement was strong enough to animate these uh, additional hands. What we did, uh, we had to respect the the characteristic of the movement. Uh, and uh, that's why we decided to change the, the material of, uh, of the chronograph hand, but also the small seconds hand. So as you said, we, we had to, to play with the density of, uh, of the hands in order to, to respect the equation. That's really very smart. <laughs> I love it. So the Snoopy hand is actually the counterweight of the chronograph hand. And of course, uh, it turns anti-clockwise. Huh? Wow, what do I have to say? Thank you very much, Greg, for this presentation. In Biel, I was just sitting back, enjoying the show, <laughs> asking some questions, but thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you so much. For me, one of the coolest chronographs and one of the coolest watches probably I have seen in my entire career as a watch journalist. Now it's up to you. Please leave your comments in the comment section. Tell me what you think and what you have to say about the watch. Ask your questions. I'm more than happy to read, uh, to answer your questions, and of course, and I'm keen to read your comments. Thank you very much um, for watching. Um, stay tuned. There is much more to come, as always, on Watch Advisor on YouTube, and see you soon here back on our channel very soon. Bye-bye from Vienna and also bye-bye from Biel in Switzerland. <laughs>